My old name is Hasa Panya. So Hasa means joyous, Panya means wisdom. So my name is Joyous Wisdom. Yes, I learned a lot. And I never thought that being a nun, I have to learn lots of things. You know, how to use chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> with the water system and how to fix the drain and digging trenches and things like that because when you live in the forest so we have to learn a lot of skills to be to be able to live in the forest but I find that it's really good like uh, lots of experience and lots of things that we thought that only man can do it but and actually we can do it too <laughs> You know, we we going up to the roof and clean the gutters and things like that. Those monk jobs, I mean, these are uh, man jobs. But we are doing all this ourselves. But, but you know, lots of time we all, always think that we can't. So when we think that we can't, we can't. So, but because of we are living in the forest and because we are the nun communities, so we we have to be independent and then we have to learn to do things ourselves. And I learned a lot from staying in the forest, like get to know the nature much more and have more that interconnectedness. And sometimes I, I, was a, I was a city girl, so I have no ideas about the forest, but now I have more like a, a more interconnected with the nature and there's still feel more uh, openness you know, to, to the nature and I feel more connected. Like, because like, we're in the, in the city, we, we don't know about the nature and we are quite close up. We don't have the openness. But if you stay in the forest, you, you have that openness and interconnectedness that to the nature, to the all beings, you know, all the little creatures. But in the city, you know, you, you don't have that experience. Uh, yes, it's important because uh, like this morning in my talks, like um, what the Buddha said, what is wholesome, the criteria of wholesome and unwholesome. Wholesome means that whatever things that we do leads to happiness and is not only benefit ourselves and benefit others. So being a nun, actually a lot of people have that uh, perception that things like being lazy, but actually you need to do a lot of inner work and the persistency and the patience and endurance and the consistency of take up the whole path of practice. And a lot of people benefit, like, uh, like because of, for example, we have people come to stay here and they're being with the, the nuns, you know, how the way we live. And we can, live, we, we can be happy, just a simple life. We don't have lots of material things. So the most important that we are teaching by, by example. And is this possible? Because uh, especially now, we are all this uh, materialism. Lots of people like who have the most toys, you know, and that that becomes like the actually it's weaken the mind because the mind constantly go out to look for the gratification from senses. So when this senses actually is weaken the mind, so actually the only way that we help to to strengthen the mind actually to stop to 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 go chasing after the sense the, the sensory pleasure because they give you. The happiness, but the kind of happiness do not last. Like it's just very fleeting. So then we become very dependent on the objects outside, on our senses. But there is another type of happiness that we do not rely on the object outside, rely on the senses, but it's independent. That we don't have to. And this kind of happiness, this is the happiness of peace, happiness of calm. And that is really more fulfilling and more satisfactory I mean, compared to those uh, uh, happiness from the senses. Because like the senses is, is just like the pleasure from the senses. It's just like you're drinking a salty water. The more you drink, you get more, you know, more thirsty. And it never leads to contentment. Only by being calm, peaceful, only the inner peace and the calmness leads to contentment. Actually, contentment is the greatest wealth. Why? Everybody wants to be happy. But if we are not content, no matter how much we have, we are not you know, uh, 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 going to have this con uh, be contented. You know? 
That's why it's very important that we show by, we live by uh, teaching by example, we live the simple life and a life of integrity and the spiritual life. And this is one, one way, you know, to, to teach, you know, to educate the people that, you know, that is another kind of happiness besides the happiness that, you know, that uh, 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 go after running after this, uh, chasing after this, uh, a sense, uh, the happiness from the sensual pleasure. So, and um, this is a very important thing. And also that uh, being a nun, because um, especially when I was in Thailand, and normally for most people in Asia, you know, for Asian, uh, like especially in Thailand, for them, being a monk is something very noble. Being a nun is that someone that being old or sick or they are the failure. <laughs> That's why they be, being a nun. But actually it's not. Like we, we, a lot of uh, the nuns here, they're being highly educated and they have a, a successful career and they come in. But, you know, because they have a, another type of happiness that, you know, you cannot be found in the world. So this is how it's important that we show that, you know, and the, the, the having the monastery here because we're independent, so we are not dependent on the monks. And because in Asia, especially like in Thailand, most of the nuns, they're, they're leaning on the monk. So, and, and to them, is that it's not possible. And, and women is always the second class. They're not as good as men. And they've been told that way, they've been conditioned that way, and they believe that, you know, women is less capable and second class. And by having a nun's monastery, actually it's, uh, it gives a lot of uh, confidence, you know, and to a lot of uh, women. We have some women come here and they can see that, yes, you know, actually women can do it. And, you know, we, we are not second class. We are as intelligent as a man, but only thing that we have to be given the opportunities. It's just like in the olden days, women, they are not allowed, you know, they weren't allowed to go to school. Doesn't mean that they are less intelligent, but they, they weren't given the opportunities to higher education. It's not that they're stupid. And the same thing too, like being a, a support the nuns, they, you know, the nuns itself, they, we don't have to depend on the monks, we can be independent. And we need to give, be given the opportunities to be independent. Yes, because the Buddha said that there is such a four pillars. That is monks, nuns, and lay women and lay men. They said the four pillars, that is the, 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 the fourfold of assembly. The Buddha said, that, you know, that is the, the, the full flesh. There is the four pillars that, you know, that so that the, we, we said this uh, uh, Buddha sasana, that means that the dis dispensation. So it will last longer if we have the four pillars. So if we don't have nuns, then we have only three, three legs. <laughs> so it's important to have the full flesh, then we have the, you know, the four pillars. Monks, nuns, laymen and laywomen practice the, 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 this Buddha's teaching. Yeah, actually it's helped me to open up a lot myself. Like I, you know, because I come from a different conditioning. And, and of course, when I just came here, I, I couldn't understand, like because different culture, different background. And sometimes I, I at the beginning, I just couldn't get my head around, <laughs> you know. But after a while, I tend to like open up myself. And actually it's helped me to become more compassionate and becomes a, a kinder person, like because be able to, to put myself onto other people's shoes. And it's really helped me to become more compassionate 
because uh, I can start to see the conditioning, why you know people behave in a certain way, and sometimes you know, and actually, it's like everybody have their own ideas. Uh, you know, syncrasy. So and we, we tend to ch judge others. Like we think that, oh, the person is weird. And actually the same thing, the other person also thinks that I'm weird too, you know. Because of our Asians, you know, we have certain, you know, things that, you know, some, we, we, when we come here, we judge the Westerners. We think that, oh, they are weird. And then actually the Westerners also think that, oh, yeah, weird too. So, but it's just because of we are being brought up in a different background and we've been conditioned. The Buddha said we've been conditioned. So that's why we have, uh, you know, so some things, for example, is normal to us, may not be normal to you. <laughs> Something normal to you is not normal to me. So then I have more understanding. Then I less, I become less judgmental, like not jump into conclusions and, and started to judge the, judge the person, you know. No, no, yes. The, the, I must say the community here, especially the lay uh, supporters, and they're really very supportive and they're really, you know, it couldn't be better. <laughs> it's they're really supportive of the nuns here. And this is the only um, uh, Theravada and forest traditions, and especially for nuns independent and this is the only one in the training monastery, training nuns monastery in this tradition. Actually this is the only one.